Halo, Assalamualaikum Mas Wahyu Mas Wahyu Halo Iya, apa namanya Ini nanti yang di setting Ho sama Koho siapa ya Ibu Ayu juga ya oh, oh. Terus siapa lagi Maksud saya nanti Semua narasumber moderator Maksud saya nanti kan peserta itu diverifikasi dulu. Nah, itu kan nanti yang admit kan saya. Jadi eh, eh, bisa nggak ya, apa namanya, di setting yang admit itu hanya dari akun saya gitu. Kayaknya nggak bisa ya. Bisa nih. Ini sudah ibu Ayu. Jadi yang admit nanti uh, hanya dari akun saya aja gitu loh. Iya. Iya Mbak Ayu. Intinya sih kalau sudah kohos itu ya punya level itu Mbak Ayu. Iya maksud saya kan yang kohos kan ada banyak nanti hmm. takutnya ada yang admit selain Mbak, saya. Nanti. Jadi nanti uh, ini apa namanya kami tidak akan mengupload. Oh ya udah. Kan nanti saya cek dulu. Jadi uh, saya infoin dulu. Takutnya nanti misalnya ada yang koho juga terus ke klik admit all gitu kan. Yeah. Masih, uh, uh, saya mau ngomongnya juga nggak enak tapi maksudnya itu kan mungkin niatnya bantu tapi. Uh. Memang kar, ya itu maksudnya. Ketika, ketika sudah level kohos itu ya punya level itu mengadmit. Iya, yeah. oh, mas saya gimana ibu enaknya ya menyampaikannya supaya mengabaikan waiting room nanti yang admit itu hanya dari saya gitu loh. Kan nanti kohos bisa bisa mengadmit semua bu. Nanti yang untuk uh, apa namanya yang yang kita utamakan kan yang sudah mendaftar, uh -uh. yang sudah mendaftar baik ba baik itu autor maupun mm -hmm. uh, presenter itu. Mm -hmm. Jadi yang punya data kan kamu. Jadi mm -hmm. nanti uh, yang lainnya itu bantunya nanti setelah jam 9.30 eh, setelah jam 9.45. Iya. Jadi kalau kan uh, kita minta setengah jam sebelum jam 10 untuk peserta mm -hmm. bisa masuk. Iya mm. maksud Jadi saya nanti kalau seandainya jam 9.45 itu ada beberapa presenter atau autor atau partisipan yang sudah berkontribusi itu masuk mm -hmm. eh, apa namanya eh belum masuk ya mau nggak yeah. mau eh, kita keluarkan dari eh, internal yeah. dari internal kita gitu uh, uh, ya yeah. maksud saya malah yang admin tuh saya aja gitu bu gitu ya 
Oke, okay. uh, Pak Danu Ega berkenan uh, virtual background-nya untuk dipasang, Pak, atau saya letakkan dulu di waiting room, nggih, Pak Danu, nggih, dari UPH. Pak Danu yang sudah bergabung. Ini saya salah baca aturannya. <laughs> Uh, Bu Ferry izin ini Ayo, tadi ya. ada peserta dan juga uh, ada peserta yang sudah masuk Pak Danu Ega dan Budian serta saya letakkan dulu di waiting room. Selamat datang Bu Tineke Bu ya. Tineke Bisa mendengar audio saya Selamat datang Bu Tineke Selamat datang Bu Tineke Ini maksudnya yang yang mungkin epic baik. Ini masih. Masih apa? Mau ke Solan malam itu. Ada ini di Selawu. Apa namanya di buat ada yang dengar. Selamat datang Bu Tineke, Pak Wahyudut ya. Pak, uh, bisa mendengar audio saya berkenan uh, virtual background-nya di setting, Bapak. Ini okay. minta kondomnya. Uh, Pak, Pak Wahyudut Indrajit. Halo. Ya, Pak, berkenan uh, apa namanya virtual background-nya di setting, Bapak. Oh baik baik baik. Oke. Ya. Terima kasih. Ya Bu. Oke. Mas kasih, Wahyu, ya, Mas Wahyu, uh, bantuannya saya di spotlight sebentar. Ini gimana Bu? Tidak uh, Bapak, ini saya uh, dengan tim virtual videonya. Itu Mbak Yuk. Uh, saya di spotlight di tengah supaya peserta bisa oh, tahu. Oke. Okay. Ya. Pak Wahyu, virtual background-nya sudah Pak Wahyu, yang seperti yang putih yang di sudah kami share di email dan juga WhatsApp. Tineke. Pak Wahyu Indrajit. Bu Tineke. Bu Tineke bisa mendengar audio saya, Bu Tineke. Siap, Bu. Siap dengar, ya. hadir. Itu je, Bu, virtual background-nya di uh, setting gih bu, ya bu lagi dicoba bu. Oh, oh ya baik, ya. baik ya. pagi semua ya, ya. bu. Di, ya. 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 Oh, oh, uh, mas Mas Udi berkenan dimu dulu Mas Udi, yang Mas Udi, ya. Mas Udi. Yuk, sudah ada yang pada tanya belum? Ya, ini, bu. Belum. Nah, harus kembali untuk MC saya. Iya. 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 Iya
Pak Isnu, oh, uh, saya Ayu. Pak Isnu berkenan virtual backgroundnya Pak Isnu. Pak Isnu, Pak Isnu bisa mendengar audio saya, Pak Isnu? Pak Isnu, Pak Wahyu dan Butineka berkenan virtual backgroundnya diganti dulu, nggih? Pak Isnu, Pak Isnu di uh, unmute dulu, Pak Isnu virtual backgroundnya diganti tampilannya nanti seperti saya ini, nggih? Pak Wahyu, Pak Isne, Pak Danu Ega, ya, ye, ya, e, bisa di setting, ye, Pak Wahyu sudah betul. E, Pak Wahyu izin berkenan jika memungkinkan bisa pindah lokasi karena sedikit gelap. Ye, Pak Danu sudah, Pak Isnu, Bu Tineke. Ya Pak Isnu, oh, nge, Pak Wahyu sudah jelas Pak Wahyu posisinya. Nge. Pak Isnu, nge, uh, leaflet virtual backgroundnya dapat di-download di WA Group atau di email Pak Isnu, nge, dapat di-setting. Bu Tineke, monggo. Ya sebentar Bu, sebentar Bu. Nge. Bu Indriani, Bu Indriani, selamat datang. Bu Ayub, Bu Ayub, sudah. Mana? Halo, Bu Ayub, sudah? Ye, sudah, sudah Pak Wahyu, sudah jelas. Ye, terima kasih. Ye, ye, berkenan di mute dulu dan menunggu tetap di tempat, menunggu sampai nanti kita mulai. Ye. Baik, matur suwun. Ye, sami-sami. Pak Isnu belum berhasil atau ada kendala Pak Isnu? Bu Indriani, Pak Isnu, Bu Indriani. Ya, Bu. Halo. Ya, Pak Isnu, uh, virtual ya. background-nya ada kendala, Bu Ten? Iya, udah saya ganti background, tapi keluar masih tembok asli aja. <laughs> oh, logo-logo uh, logo video itu ada tanda panah diklik lalu cus virtual ground. Iya udah udah saya ganti uh, jadi kecil sih ya background yeah. itu. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Tapi kok uh, masih belum ini belum maksimal lah sinyal nih masih keluar yeah. temboknya aja nih. Iya yeah. Bu Indriani berkenan virtual backgroundnya untuk dipasang. Ya yeah. ya yeah, seperti itu Ibu. Iya yeah. yeah, sudah ya. Ya, yeah, sudah. Yeah. Uh, Mbak selamat Vika. pagi, Bu Ayu. Yeah, selamat pagi. Mbak Vika, apa kabar? Virtual background-nya dapat disetting, Mbak Vika. Selamat pagi, Mbak Ayu. Halo. Virtual background-nya disetting dulu ya. Oh, iya. Yeah. Yeah. Suaranya Mbak Vika kok tidak terlalu jelas. Pak Isnu berkenan juga uh, tetap mencoba J Bapak J. Yeah, ini sedang dicoba-coba Ibu. J Maturnuwun. Dicoba-coba nggak usah bisa ya. Ya Bu Tineke. Bu izin ya. Bu uh, ya. linknya boleh dikirim lagi di grup Bu untuk download backgroundnya. Oh baik baik saya ya. kirim kembali ge. Siap terima kasih bu. Ya ini saya up kembali. Kurang terang ya. ya. Sudah saya kirim kembali bu Tineke di WA Group. Pak Isnu berkenan tetap mencoba, nge, Bapak, nge. 
Selamat datang Pak Irawan. Oke Pak Irawan, berkenan virtual background-nya untuk di setting terlebih dahulu Bapak. Miss Ayu, Miss Ayu. Oh J, Bu, J. Jadi Pak Rektor mencoba masuk, ada ada itu masuk nggak? Di admin coba beliau, beliau lagi mencoba untuk gabung. Oh, sementara kalau di data Pak Rektor belum rawuh, Ibu. Itu. J. Saya tahu lagi ya, saya biar Pak ini ke ke tim G. Siap, siap. J, Bu, J. Ini ya, gimana saya. sudah ada belum? Belum itu, Ibu. Soalnya soalnya bunyinya begini. Uh, this meeting is for authorized participant only. Uh, coba Mas Wahyu, Ibu. So, nggih Pak Dan Hamrin. Ini begitu, Wi. Mang ini gimana, Pak? Nanti mau masuk ya, begitu. Pak Hamrin berkenan oh, uh, virtual background-nya dapat di setting Pak Irawan dan juga Pak Isnu gimana, Pak? Hanya oh. untuk partisipan, gimana caranya berarti? Ya, jum, belum Maksudnya Pak Hamrin, Pak Irawan, dan Pak Isno. Saya sedang cari-cari lokasi yang bisa nih backgroundnya kayak bermasalah atau gimana? Iya, yeah. yeah. Pak Pak Hamrin bisa mendengar audio saya, Pak Hamrin. Uh, berkenan di setting backgroundnya uh, icil Pak Amrin. Itu sama Hasan ya, Mbak Lulu. Foto, fotonya sudah kami email Pak Amrin ke uh, apa namanya WA ke email dan juga WA grup sudah kami post kembali Pak Amrin, Pak Irawan, Pak Irawan. Saya put di waiting room dulu nggak Pak Irawan? Pak Hamrin, selamat datang Pak Bapak Raden Muhammad Mirhadi. J, Bapak berkenan untuk setting virtual background-nya Bapak. Pak Pak Raden Muhammad. Pak Hamrin juga berkenan setting dahulu nggih Pak Hamrin. Saya put di waiting room dulu nggih. Bapak Raden Muhammad Bapak Raden Muhammad, Ibu Dian, berkenan eh, apa virtual backgroundnya dipasang Ibu, audio eh, videonya di on kan, nge, saya pun di waiting room dulu nge Ibu sembari mempersiapkan. Pak Isnu, eh, Pak Isnu saya put di waiting room dulu nggak Pak Isnu. Bu Alia, Bu Alia bisa mendengar audio saya Bu Alia. Pak Raden Muhammad saya put di waiting room dulu sambil mempersiapkan eh, virtual backgroundnya nggak? Bu Alia. Bu Alia, Bu Alia, Bu Alia, Pak Bambang, Pak Bambang Eko, Bapak, Pak Bambang. Pak Bambang Eko, Bu Alia, eh, mohon berkenan menjawab. Ya Bu, Assalamualaikum. Gih, Waalaikumsalam Bu Alia, izin ya. eh, dapat di setting virtual background-nya, eh, fotonya sudah kami share kembali di WA Group. Oh, baik Bu, sebentar. Ye. Ye. Pak Bambang, Pak Bambang. Pak Bambang, Pak Bambang, 
Bu Reski, nge, selamat datang. Berkenan uh, virtual background-nya, Pak Bambang, uh, berkenan virtual background-nya dapat di setting Bapak. Nge, fotonya kami uh, share sudah di WA Group, di, dapat di setting Bu Reski. Virtual background-nya dapat di setting Bu. Kami put di waiting room dulu, nge. Pak Bambang, kami put di waiting room dulu. Ya. Yeah. Bu Lutfi, selamat datang Bu Lutfi, saya Ayub. Ibu, mohon izin uh, virtual background-nya dapat di setting, Ibu. Bu Lutfi, sama Bu Alia. Ya, yeah. yeah, virtual. Ya, belum, belum terlihat, Ibu. Oh, belum ya? Ya. Yeah. Perlu kami put di waiting room dulu atau uh, sudah bisa, Ibu? Saya udah. Bisa. Belum. Bu Lutfi dan Bu Alia berkenan. Ini saya udah cus. Saya put dulu, nge, Pak Irawan. Pak Irawan, nge. Nge, tetap seperti itu dulu, nge, Pak Irawan. Berkenan tetap di tempat sampai nanti dimulai. Ya, Bu Alia, eh, mungkin eh, bisa pindah lokasi, Bu. Eh, sedikit light, tapi sudah betul. Nge, tinggal pindah lokasi saja, tetap di tempat Pak Irawan dan Bu Alia, nge. Bulut V, Bulut V, oh, masih prosesnya. Ya, Bu Alia sudah, sudah nampak Ibu. Bu Reski berkena virtual background-nya di, uh, di setting dulu, Ibu. Yeah. Bu Lutfi, Bu Reski, Bu Reski Ami, uh, ada kendala button di setting virtual background-nya. Kami put dulu di waiting room, Bu Reski. Oke, Sugeng Rawo, Bu Anis. Mohon izin virtual background-nya dapat di accept, Ibu. Eh, mohon izin virtual background-nya dapat di setting, Ibu. Bu Anis. Ibu, kami put di waiting room dulu, nge. Berkenan. Uh, uh, ya, Mbak Ayub, gimana Mbak Ayub? G virtual background-nya di setting rumian ibu izin bu. Oh, oh yang setting dari panitia. Oh, Buatan dari ibu. Oh gitu. It, anu G. dapetnya dari mana itu mbak? Oh sebentar sebentar ini saya post. G. G saya. Eh, di share mbak, di share G. di grup kali ya. G. Siap siap. G susah pun ibu di WA grup fakultas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Siap. Berkenan di setting niku Ibu. Iya, Mbak. Siap. Oke, Mbak Nuwun. Terima kasih Mbak Ayub sukses nih, Mbak. Amin, Ibu.
Pak Bambang, gih sampun Pak Bambang, berkenan tetap di tempat sampai nanti dimulai gih Pak Bambang. Bulut V masih ada kendala audio, Bulut V. Pak Setio, Sugeng Rawo. Pak Setio berkenan virtual background-nya Bapak. Pak Setio. Mbak Mutiara eh, di onkan videonya dan di setting virtual backgroundnya. Pak Setio, Bulut V, Mbak Mutiara. Pak Setio, Bulut V, Mbak Mutiara. Dapat merespon. Bu Dian, izin berkenan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting, Ibu. Bu Dian, Bu Dian, Bu Dian. Pak Murji, Pak Murji Sugeng Rawo. Pak Murji. Pak Murji Sugeng Rawo. Pak Murji berkenan virtual background-nya Bapak. Pak Murji. Pak Murji dapat mendengar audio saya. Ya, dengar Bu, dengar Bu. Halo, ya. Halo, Nje Pak Murji, berkenan virtual background-nya dapat di setting Pak Murji sesuai di yang sudah kami WA kan, Bapak? Ya, tapi anu Bu enggak enggak bisa ya saya ini tak klik more kok enggak ada virtual background nih. Oh itu Pak di bawah ya. di samping itu ada logo kamera. Oh, kamera ya. Oh, ya itu diklik. Nah nanti ada cus virtual background. Sebelah kiri ini Bu ya. Eh bawah Bapak bawah bawah Bapak Bapak menggunakan laptop atau HP J? di bagian bawah ini bulut V Mbak Mutiara bulut V Pak Setio Pak Setio berkenan Bapak Ibu yang belum virtual groundnya di setting berkenan di setting Enggak bisa ya. Enggak ada virtual background ya. Enggak Di setting ya. dulu, Nje, Bapak. Pak Cacu. Pak Cacu Sugeng Rawo. Nge, berkenan virtual background-nya sesuai di leaflet WA Group kami, Bapak. Bisa ya. Nje, Bu Anis, Matur Nuhun. Mungkin dapat apa berpindah lokasi, Bu. Sedikit nyaru, Ibu. Mbak Mutiara, Budian, Pak Murji berkenan di setting dahulu, Nje Bapak, Pak Cacu, Pak Cacu dapat mendengar audio saya, Pak Cacu, Pak Richard, Pak Cacu, Pak Richard. Iya ini 
Oh nggak nggak bisa ya nyetel virtual background ya saya ya. Ini oh. nggak bisa ibu. Di bagian bawah bapak. Iya itu bagian bawah more itu katanya kata anak saya ya tapi kok nggak ada print. Um, Pak Richard Pak Richard berkenan di setting dulu nggak Pak Murci nge. Hmm. Pak Richard. Dapat di unmute dulu Pak Richard, berkenan merespon. Mbak Mutiara, virtual background-nya bisa disetting. Pak Cacu. Pak Cacu. Ya, Bu Ani Sampun, Matunun. Pak Cacu. Pak Cacu. Selamat Pak selamat. Cacu. Pak Cacu, kami pun di waiting room dulu, nggak Pak Cacu. Ambil virtual background-nya berkenan di setting. Pak Richard, Pak Richard, Pak Richard, Pak Richard, Pak Isnu, Pak Isnu, belum berhasil Pak Isnu, Pak Richard. Pak Isnu, berkenan virtual background-nya ya Pak Isnu? Ini saya coba lagi. Tadi sih udah saya ganti. Nih, iya, saya ganti. Pak Richard, Oke. Pak Richard kami pun di waiting room dulu ya Bapak. Mbak Mutiara, Mbak Mutiara, ya videonya bisa di-on kan Mbak? Iya, baik Ibu. Ya, dengan virtual background. Nangolnya begini agak susah Bu Krista Bu Krista Ya Bu Krista tetap di tempat Sambil menunggu acara dimulai Ibu Oke matunun Sudah Sudah oke okay. Tampilannya. Pak Isnu belum be belum berhasil nggak saya Mbak Reski Bu Reski Ami monggo didudukan dulu videonya Bu Dian kami pun di waiting room dulu ya Ibu Bapak Setio Bapak Setio. Ada yang dapat kami bantu, Pak. Virtual background-nya belum tersetting, Bapak. Uh, di unmute dulu, Bapak. Ya, gimana caranya, Bu? Nge, caranya itu di bagian bawah. Bawah. Ad, ada tulisan video dan stop video. Hmm. Kemudian ada tanda panah ke atas. Berkenan ya. untuk diklik. Oke. Okay. Oke, lalu ada cus okay. virtual background. Ini, ini ada oke okay, ya? Oke okay, ya. Cus, nge, cus virtual background. Naru, 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 naru. Nge, berkenan dapat nah, koordinasi. Bu, bu ini, uh, ini screen. Saya, saya screen bu. Ini oke okay, sudah bu. Terus mana bu? Setelah uh, oke. Okay, virtual background bapak. Atau ada rekan sekitar di situ bapak? Oh, ntar, ntar, ntar ya. Ntar, ntar, ya. Nge, Bu Reski dan Pak Murji belum, nge. Pak Isnu juga. Bu, belum bisa ya saya. Ini nggak ada menu virtual background nih. Ya. Harusnya di more ini. Oh, nggak sampun. Nggak sampun. Yang penting standby. Nge. Oke, Bu Nora. Bu Nora. Bu Nora. Bu Nora. Bu Nora. 
Nggih, Pak Isno sudah uh, samar ter terlihat buat apa apa Bu Nora. Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung berkenan uh, dapat dinyalakan videonya dan setting virtual background-nya nggih. Bu Enda, nggih Bu Enda. Virtual background-nya berkenan di setting Ibu. Bu Nora, Bu Cahya. Monggo. Pak Setio Budaru, Pak Setio Budaru, ada ada Budaru sebentar ye Mbak. Oh je je ye ye. Bapak Ibu. Yang sudah bergabung, Bu Nora, Pak Setianto, virtual backgroundnya, nggih Bapak J, Bu Tineke, nggih berkenan virtual backgroundnya Bapak, Bapak Ibu yang sudah kami absen. Halo. Jadi Bapak. Kereta lebih kerennya gimana Bu? Di bagian bawah Bapak. Jadi. Namun jika tidak dimungkinkan videonya saja dinyalakan Bapak. Jadi Bu Ami sudah betul, Bu Lutfi juga sudah betul. Ini Pak Pak Kartika, Pak Kartika, videonya dapat dinyalakan Bapak. Pak Kartika, Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung berkenan, j berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan dan setting virtual backgroundnya Bapak Ibu. Bisa cara settingnya cara settingnya belum bisa dibuka. Oh, nggih, nggih, nggih sampun, nggih sampun. Uh, videonya mawon dinyalakan Bapak Ibu, nggih. Videonya dinyalakan. Siap, Bu. Kamera, nggih Bapak, nggih kameranya dinyalakan Bapak Ibu. Bu Inda, Pak Kartika, Bu Nora, Pak Mirhadi. Nan videonya dinyalakan. Makasih, makasih. Harus di download ya, download smart virtual background package ya. Uh, tidak bapak, uh, yang di download hanya virtual backgroundnya yang putih itu yang sudah kami uh, sampaikan kembali di WA Group. Bapak. Ah ini, udah ya saya ya. Bu Enda, Bu saya Lydia, J. Sebentar mbak, baru oh, setting yeah. virtual background sebentar ya. Yeah. Yeah. J, Pak Khalid, Bu Lydia, Pak Khalid. Kita nggak bisa masukin backgroundnya itu, Bu. J, dinyalakan mawon audionya, eh, videonya. Berkenan videonya di bagian bawah dinyalakan. Oh, iya. okay. Nah, saya sudah. Oke, Bapak Ibu, berkenan videonya dinyalakan. Terus, udah nih, klik lagi. Oke, Bapak Ibu, Bu Herwastuti berkenan Mbak Rizky Eka, kami put dulu di waiting room. Pak Sukron, Pak Indung berkenan ya dapat dinyalakan. J Matunun. Bu Nora, Bu Nora, 
Bu Nurah kami put dulu di waiting room ya. Bu Herwas Tuti. Iya Mbak. Oke Bu, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan Ibu. Jika memungkinkan dapat di setting virtual background-nya. Mas Miftahul. Mas Miftahul. Iya Ibu. Ya, videonya dinyalakan dan setting virtual background-nya. Pak Richard. Bu Tiwu, Pak Richard, Bu Tiwu, Pak Richard, Bu Tiwu, Ya, Bapak Ibu yang baru kami absen, berkenan videonya dinyalakan. Bu Tiwu, Mbak Debora, Bu Vivi, Geng Rabu, berkenan videonya dinyalakan. Ya, Bu Vivi. Ya, jika memungkinkan dapat di setting virtual background-nya Ibu. Nah, ini belum ya. bisa. Ya, kalau belum bisa ya sampun sementara Bentar. videonya dinyalakan. Ya, videonya dapat dinyalakan. Ya, Bu Indah mungkin jika memungkinkan dapat pindah lokasi atau nyaru. Uh, Mas Anggit jika mungkin kan dapat di setting virtual background-nya. Pak Murjib, Bu Vivi, jika mungkin jika virtual background buatan mungkin kan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Iya, virtual background terus nanti Ini virtual background terus Ye, yeah. Bapak Ibu yang baru bergabung berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan jika memungkinkan dapat dilakukan setting virtual backgroundnya Bapak Ibu. Bisa. Virtual background. Ini tapi aku tidak mungkin caranya. Nganu. Supaya di admit harus Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung Berkenan uh, videonya dinyalakan Bapak Ibu Caranya bagaimana ini Mbak untuk virtual uh, Welcome Prof Thomas Please uh, stay and wait until we. Yeah. Saya ada gangguan bu di virtual backgroundnya ini. Ya, yeah, ndak apa-apa, bapak. Uh, videonya mawon dinyalakan, bapak. Yeah. 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 Oke, okay. yeah, Bapak Ibu yang baru bergabung, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Untuk backgroundnya itu, enggak enggak dek. Ye, yeah, jika setting virtual background tidak memungkinkan, berkenan videonya di on kan. Ya, Ye. Ye Bu, sudah sudah bisa Bu virtual on ya? Sudah backgroundnya sudah tidak bisa kali. J, 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 jika tidak memungkinkan ya. uh, videonya di on kan berkenan ya. J, ya. jika mu tidak memungkinkan uh, virtual background di setting videonya dapat di on kan. Ya, masih bu, masih masih. J, J. Di sini biasanya bisa. Baik. 
Bapak Ibu oh, yang ya. baru saja bergabung, berkenan videonya dapat di on -kan. Dan jika memungkinkan, virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting. Bapak Ibu dari Fakultas Hukum UNES, berkenan videonya dapat di on -kan. Pak Khalid, Pak Khalid, Pak Khalid, Pak Khalid, Pak Khalid, Mas Yuda, Pak Khalid, Mas Yuda, Bapak Ibu berkenan dapat di onkan videonya Bapak Ibu. Yang lain bisa sesuai. Jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting. Ya, Putih mana? Ini kak? Bukan. Ya, uh, yang baru saja bergabung berkenan uh, virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting. Namun jika tidak mungkinkan videonya dapat di on kan, Bapak Ibu, Mas Jordi, Mas Agustia, videonya dapat dinyalakan. Ini masih loading, masih loading. Bapak Ibu Berkenan dapat di mute Jika sudah setting Pak Ilham Sugeng Rawo Ya. Ya. Bapak Ibu yang baru bergabung dari Fakultas Hukum UNES Berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan Jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting Mas Yuda virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting Saya kebalik Bu Salam kenal Bu Ayu Selamat pagi ya, Salam kenal Ibu Uh, jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting bu oh bu Vina sampun ge ya, <laughs> yeah. terima kasih sudah bu Ayub selamat yeah. pagi yeah. waalaikumsalam bu Salma ada kendala Pak Khalid gambarnya tidak jelas bu Ayub oh je yeah. videonya saja di on kan bapak hmm. nah, itu. Bu, saya mohon izin mau lewat uh, ganti lewat desktop aja, Bu. Ini pakai oh, HP. J, J, Bu, lebih lebih nyaman menggunakan desktop. J, terima kasih. J, ya, ya, Bapak Ibu, uh, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. <SILENCIO> Pak Hisbula Sugeng Pak Hisbula Nggak Bapak Ibu sambil menunggu Berkenan untuk mute Suara mute. saya jelas nggak Bu? Jelas Ibu Jelas Di, ya. ya siap, makasih Kalau saya ilham jelas nggak? Jelas, jelas ya. Pak Ya, Pak Isbul, jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting, Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung, Bu Herwastuti, ya, ya. mungkin ya, ya. Uh, geser sedikit, uh, sedikit nyaruk Bu Herwastuti, ya, atau berpindah lokasi. Ya, Bapak Muhammad Naji, jika memungkinkan uh, dapat di setting Pak Heru, Pak Dodi, Bulut Fit, atau dinyalakan dulu videonya. Ya, Bapak Ibu yang baru bergabung, jika belum memungkinkan setting virtual background, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Oke, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan, ya. Caranya ya, Bu, virtual backgroundnya. Kalau tidak bisa, videonya saja dinyalakan, kameranya dinyalakan. Oh. 
Bu Arni. Bu Arni. Oke, Bu Arni, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Oke, Bapak Ibu yang baru bergabung, Pak Richard, Pak Richard. Ya, Bu Arni sudah Oke, Bu Arni Maturnuwun tetap di tempat. Oke, Bapak Ibu Bu Wirwastuti sudah baik. Oke, Pak Naji juga sudah oke. Pak Isbula, jika memungkinkan virtual background-nya dapat di setting Pak Isbula. Mas Chandra. Mas Chandra. Mas, Chan, Mas Yuda Chandra. Selamat pagi ya. Bu Ayu. Iya, selamat pagi Bu. Ini Kartika, Ibu. Ya, Bu Litvi. Bu, okay. ah, maaf ini Bu, kebetulan saya backgroundnya ada wallpaper jadi wajah saya tidak kelihatan gimana Bu Ayu kira-kira ya? Oke, okay. uh, dapat dinyalakan saja videonya. Ya, baik. Yeah. Ya. Okay. Ah, mohon maaf, okay. tidak pakai background ya, Bu ya. Oke. Okay. Okay. Bu Hilda, Bu Hilda jika mungkin kan uh, dapat lokasi sedikit nyaru Bu Hilda. Ini Bu Hilda. saya enggak sampai sana ya. Pak Tonggat Sugeng Rawo Pak Tonggat Selamat pagi Ayu Irfan selamat datang Ya selamat pagi Ibu J Bapak Ibu J jika tidak memungkinkan setting virtual, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Ya, yeah. sampun Bu yeah. Ayu, terima kasih. Je, je, matunun. Pak Tonggat, je. Bapak Ibu yang sudah bergabung, jika Selamat tidak memungkinkan. Pagi, Bu Ayu, luar biasa. Ye, selamat pagi Bu WD1. Alhamdulillah sehat ya Pak Ayu lancar mudah-mudahan nanti ya. Amin amin. Pak Tonggat, Pak Tongat, Bapak. Ye, Mas Syarif jika mungkin kan dapat uh, sedikit pindah, sedikit nyaru Mas Syarif. Namun jika tidak mungkin kan videonya saja di on kan. Oke, Bu Nora, Bu Nora, Bu Nora, Bapak Ibu dari Fakultas Hukum UNES, izin jika mungkin kan audio videonya berkenan di on kan, Bapak Ibu. Video saya sudah ya Bu ya, video saya sudah Yee, ya Pak. Sampun, Bu, nomor sampun. Tahu, ya, tahu, Bapak Ibu. Saya berusaha Ibu. nampilkan virtual background Bu, nanti coba saya usahakan. J, J, Pak Murci, J, J, Assalamualaikum, Bu Yub. J, Pak Tongat, Waalaikumsalam, Bapak. Saya Firman Syah. Oh, Pak Firman Syah, J. Saya mau uh, buat bikin itu background gimana caranya? Uh, jika menggunakan desktop itu di bagian bawah Bapak ada logo video tulisan stop video itu ada ya. tanda panah ke atas. Ya. Nah, ya. tanda panah ke atas diklik. Nah, Terus kemudian virtual itu background. virtual background. J, namun sebelumnya download terlebih dahulu Bapak yang sudah kami share di WA Group. Oh gitu. Je, namun jika tidak mungkin kan berkenan video Bapak Ibu dapat di on kan. Uh, ya ini ini on. 
Iya. Terus uh, cara ngambilnya gimana tadi, Bu? Uh, buka WhatsApp-nya dulu, Bapak. Website? Web, uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp group. WA WhatsApp group-nya. Group, huh? Ya, yang sudah uh, saya post barusan. Putih itu, Bapak. Foto putih. Foto putih. Yang sign in to join. Buka uh, logo, logo, itu, logo icil. Logo icil. Logo icil. Logo icil. Oke. Kok saya belum? Oh iya, iya. Logo icil sih ya. Oke. Nah, nah itu di choose-nya di bagian tadi choose terus dipilih fotonya Bapak. Oh jadi, oh, iya, iya, iya. Berarti saya harus... Amin, selasih Ale. Selasih apa? Putih, ya, putih. Pak Ibu. Oke, Pak Richard, Pak Richard. Online, online. Bu Winda, Bu Winda Wijayanti, nggih. Ini namanya kok di sini Bu Agnes Winda, nggih. Bu Agnes Winda dapat respon. Ya. Nggih. Tapi nggak apa-apa ya? Iya, uh, berkenan username-nya diganti, Bu, sesuai oh, iya. uh, pendaftaran Winda Wijayanti. Oh iya. Nggih. Ya, Bapak Ibu izin berkenan username-nya dapat disesuaikan G. Bapak Ibu videonya dapat di nyalakan. Bu saya Ilham izin masuk di PC. Oh nge, nge. Bu Ayub, izin. Saya mau ganti nama dulu, diperbaiki. Iya, itu kalau ganti nama di bagian atas, tinggal klik uh, rename. Iya, oke. Okay, makasih. Iya. Makasih, Pak Yogi. Iya. Iya, Bapak Ibu, jika tidak memungkinkan virtual background-nya dapat disetting, berkenan videonya dapat di on-kan. Pak Iqbal, ya videonya kan jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting. Sedang berusaha uh, setting virtual background, Bu. J, J Bapak, jika tidak memungkinkan videonya saja di onkan Pak Richard. Pak Richard berkenan dapat merespon Bapak. Pak Richard. Pak Richard. Pak Richard. Bu Vina, bantuannya dapat dihubungi Pak Richard untuk on video Bu Vina dari Jayabaya, Ibu. Baik, Bu. Ye. Selamat pagi, Bu. Ya, selamat pagi Bapak. Dengan ya, Pak Ipal, Bu, dari Jaya Baya. Ya, Pak Ipal, berkenan videonya dapat di on kan, Bapak. Ya, Bapak Ibu dari Jaya Baya, selamat datang. Berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan, jika memungkinkan dapat di setting virtual background-nya. Gimana ya, Bu, cara merubah background-nya ya, Bu, ya? Uh, itu di bagian bawah, di bagian bawah ada logo video. Nah, itu ada tanda ke atas, dapat diklik choose virtual background. Pak Tongat, jika memungkinkan dapat berpindah uh, lokasi sedikit, sedi uh, tidak terlihat. Japri, Bang Ipal, Japri. Bang Ipal. Ya. Saya Japri, saya Japri. Oke, Bang, siap, Bang, siap, Bang. Ibu bisa melihat video saya, Kak, Bu? Ya, videonya terlihat, Bapak. Terima kasih, Bu. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Bapak-Ibu, berkenan. Iya, yeah, Ibu. Ribon. Ibu, mohon maaf. Ini... Uh... 
Maaf, saya kurang dapat mendengar audio Ibu. Lebih keras oh, iya. sedikit, Pak Tongat. Nge. Akunnya nge. Pak Tongat. Nge. 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 Jika nge. tidak memungkinkan, uh, video mawon. Nge. Nge. Abang kan udah dapat email. Jadi email yang isinya eh, background, udah kan? File virtual background, udah dapat? Udah dapat belum? Oh, abang harus dapat itu dulu, terus disimpan. Coba saya kirim email sekarang. Emailnya apa? Emailnya apa? J virtual backgroundnya kami sudah post ya, kembali di WA kan? grup. Uh, sambung ya. Pakainya PC, jadi boleh di ini Ya, jika tidak uh, memungkinkan uh, dapat di onkan saja. Email juga sudah kami kirim Bapak melalui email virtual berikutnya. Selamat datang Bu Prita, sudah bagus posisinya. Ye, Bu Isdian. Pagi. Ya, ya selamat pagi Bu Prita. Ye. Uh, Bu Winda, tadi sudah Winda Wijayanti, ini Agnes Winda lagi. Uh, nanti Atau, satu saja saya... Saya rename saja nge, dari sini, nge, Winda ya. Wijayanti. Oke. Ya, Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung, berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan jika memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat disetting. Namun jika kesulitan, videonya berkenan dinyalakan. Ibu Nur Hida ya. Bu Nur. Bu Nur Hida ya. Ya Ibu, posisinya saya sedang bersama patongan Ibu. Nanti oh baik, baik, baik. Ya, 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 baik, baik. Ya, saya perlu konfirmasi. Ya. Oh, RT ini dari satu sudutnya. Ah, ini lah kecilnya sini. Mahasiswa dari internasional kelas yang baru saja bergabung dinyalakan videonya. Dinyalakan videonya. Dan dapat di setting virtual backgroundnya. Mahasiswa dari internasional kelas yang baru saja bergabung videonya dinyalakan 
dan di setting virtual backgroundnya. Ya, Bapak Ibu di, yang di, sedang di, menunggu berkenan untuk di, dapat di mute mahasiswa kelas internasional yang baru saja bergabung silahkan dinyalakan videonya dan dapat setting virtual background Bu Vina, berkenan Pak Richard dapat dibantu, Ibu. Kami belum mendapatkan respon dari beliau, Ibu. Baik, Bu. Masih belum bisa dihubungi, Bu. Baik-baik. Uh, Ini uh, sudah kami accept, namun uh, videonya belum dapat nyala. Oke. Okay. Pak Setianto mungkin bisa bantu ke Pak Richard. Bu Rizky Oke, okay, Mbak Vina. Siap-siap. Ya, makasih. Assalamualaikum Pak Murdianto, salam dari saya Ilham. Ya, yeah, Assalamualaikum Mas Pak Ilham. Ya, yeah. sukses selalu. Alhamdulillah Pak. UAD ya, uh, UAD ya. Saya alumni Jana Badra Pak. Oh iya iya iya, sukses ya. Makasih. Amin amin. Iya. Yep. Mahasiswa kelas internasional yang baru saja bergabung, yang pertama videonya silakan dinyalakan oh. uh, setting virtual background. <tuh> virtual backgroundnya dapat uh, minta ke uh, temannya. Ya, mahasiswa kelas internasional yang baru saja bergabung, videonya dapat dinyalakan. Acara akan kami mulai nanti pukul 10, ya, sesuai jadwal ya, Bapak Ibu yang menanyakan, berkenan untuk eh, dapat di posisi yang, yang stabil. Oke, jika Wayu, Pak Jadi, Richard Bapak... Burton sudah join, Pak Richard Burton oh, sudah join yeah, yeah, di sampingnya yeah. Ibu Indah, Bro. Iya, yeah, yeah, sudah. Bu Indah, Bu Indah, berkenan username-nya disesuaikan, Ibu, atau kami rename dari sini, Ibu, Bu Indah. Silakan Bu diganti, saya agak gaptek ini. Indah. Oh iya, yeah. Jadi, Bu Indah, kami ganti dari sini. Bu Ayub, saya juga kalau bisa dirubah ininya virtual backgroundnya boleh dari sana bu? <laughs> kalau virtual oh, backgroundnya tidak bisa. bisa ya. Oke. Kenapa? Ya bapak ibu berkenan untuk di mute dan menunggu. Abangan pakai laptop Oke. tuh kan di kiri bawah udah ketemu stop video belum? Udah kan tulisan stop video udah ketemu. Terus Tidak abang udah klik panah ke atas kan ada tulisan, ada select kamera, ada HP HD kamera, ada choose virtual background, ya. kan? Uh, Pak Bagus, mungkin kami ada. rename gitu. Ada, choose Pak virtual Bagus. background. Abang Pas klik ke atas tuh kan ada panah ke atas tuh. Set, set, stop video itu kan ada panah ke atas kan? Udah ketemu belum? Ya Bapak Ibu, kami mood. Dahulu, ya Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung, izin berkenan nah, videonya ya, dapat ya? dinyalakan. Ya Bapak Ibu dari Fakultas Hukum yang baru saja bergabung. Berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan Bapak Ibu dan juga mahasiswa kelas internasional yang baru saja bergabung videonya dinyalakan dan 
uh, setting uh, virtual background-nya. Ya, Budia Sugeng Rawo, Bapak Raden Muhammad Mirhadi. Ye. Terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu yang membantu di WA Group kaitannya dengan setting virtual background. Budia berkenan merespon Ibu Dia. Bu Dia. Oh, Nje Ibu. Nje izin videonya dapat dinyalakan Ibu. Nje. Bapak Raden Muhammad Mirhadi. Tes satu masuk nggak? Saya nggak bisa mengganti itu ya, Bu Ayub. Ya, kalau nggak bisa videonya dinyalakan Ibu. Ini udah, udah. Oh, Nje, Nje, Nje sudah Bu Dia. Nje sekarang Rabu Bu Dia jumpa ya, kembali. Halo, cek Mbak Ayub, dengar suara saya? Iya, ya, terdengar Bapak. Alhamdulillah. Terdengar ya, jelas ya. Bapak. Oke, sip. Ya, Prof. Smith uh, sudah join Bapak. Ya, ya. Ya. Ya, uh, Bu Tineke, Pak Supardi yang baru saja bergabung. Videonya dapat dinyalakan Bapak Ibu dari Eva Unes. Izin videonya dapat dinyalakan. Selamat pagi Bu, sudah bisa melihat eh, background saya kah? Uh, de, maaf Bapak. Pak Silaban. Pak Ipan, Pak Ipan. Sudah berganti kah di layar? Pak Ip, bentar Pak. Mantap Mangi Pak Silaban Bu, Mangi Pak. Kelihatan Pak yeah. Ipan. Oh sudah, geng geng. Terima kasih, Bu. Ya, ya kami mau dulu, nge, Bapak. Ya, uh, Bapak Ibu, uh, sekitar 10 menit lagi akan dimulai. Mohon izin berkenan videonya yang belum dinyalakan untuk dapat dinyalakan. Jika memungkinkan, Dapat di setting virtual background, namun jika tidak memungkinkan, izin videonya dapat dinyalakan. Mas Andrew, Mas Andrew, ya ini Mas Muhammad Aji, videonya dapat dinyalakan. Bapak Raden Muhammad Mirhadi, mohon izin Bu Vina dapat dibantu dari Jayabaya. Beliau uh, belum respon akunnya. Je. Baik, Bu. Mungkin Je. Pak Satyanto bisa bantu lagi. <laughs> Lebih cepat kayaknya. Siapa Makasih. yang belum? Yang belum siapa, Bu? Adekan, Ayo. Pak. Je, oh, Bapak iya. Dekan. Je, Saya uh, Bapak Tasrip, Bu. Udah, Bu. Yes, udah, Bu. Udah masuk di sebelahnya Bang Tasrip, Pak Dekan. Je. Bu Ayu. Siap, Je. Bu. Uh, je, Pak. Pak. Pak Muhammad Raden Muhammad Mirhadi ya. berkenan izin dapat dinyalakan audionya. Uh, Sugeng ya. Rawo, Bapak uh, Dr. Hendi Pratama, mohon izin uh, sebentar. Berkenan menunggu sebentar, Bapak. Mahasiswa internasional kelas yang baru saja bergabung, videonya dapat di-on-kan. Mahasiswa internasional kelas yang baru saja bergabung berkenan koordinasi videonya dapat di-onkan dan setting virtual backgroundnya. Kayaknya harus di laptop ya, Bu ya. J lebih ya, J Pak Sumardi sudah bagus. J Pak Azil, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, Pak WR. Bu Ayub, izin bergabung, Bu Ayub. Maaf terlambat. Jee, jee, enggak ya. apa-apa, Bapak. Ya, ya Pak Ferry, Al sudah betul. Jee, salam kenal, Pak Hamrin. Jee, salam kenal, Bapak Ibu. Ya. Pak Hamrin, Pak Hamrin, mohon izin, Pak Hamrin. 
dapat dinyalakan videonya Bapak. Bu lagi ganti background Bu. Oh nje. Mahasiswa internasional kelas sekali lagi yang baru saja bergabung dinyalakan videonya nje. Latar belakang Ijek bagus juga di belakang. Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung eh, mahasiswa internasional kelas videonya dapat dinyalakan dan juga eh, setting virtual background. Pak Deni izin menyampaikan eh, Dr. Niki John sudah bergabung Pak Deni J. Ya, bagi yang belum menyalakan video, Bapak Ibu izin sebentar lagi akan dimulai berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan. Ya, Bapak Ibu. Ya. Bu Dewi, Tut, Bu Dewi, Bu Dewi, eh, Mas Tua Internasional Kelas yang baru saja bergabung, videonya dapat dinyalakan dan setting virtual backgroundnya. Pak Deni izin menyampaikan narasumber sudah rawo semua, Pak Zahir sudah rawo dan uh, Bapak Ikra juga sudah bersama kita. Ibu ini maaf virtual backgroundnya saya kok jempal ini. Ya enggak apa-apa Bu, uh, videonya saja di on kan terlebih dahulu. Ini tulisan yeah. saya malahan. Ya, selamat datang Pak Ikra, berkenan untuk menunggu sebentar, Ji. Welcome Pak Zahir. Iya, Please selamat wait. siang. Ye. Kalau Wid ada makan-makan, nggak -makan, apa-apa. Mm. Ayo, Dek. Bu Winda, Bu Winda. Ya, mahasiswa internasional kelas uh, virtual backgroundnya dapat di setting.
Ya, Bapak Ibu yang baru saja bergabung, Bu Winda ini saya ganti kembali nggih username-nya. Ya, Bapak Ibu, perkenan username dapat disesuaikan sesuai dengan data video dapat dinyalakan mahasiswa internasional kelas dapat dinyalakan videonya dan setting virtual background sekali lagi kami sampaikan mahasiswa internasional kelas Faculty of Law UNES berkenan videonya dapat dinyalakan dan dapat setting virtual backgroundnya Bapak Ibu, Bu Vina dari Jayabaya berkenan yang belum join diminta segera join Ibu. Ibu Vivi dari UMN Baik, yang belum join segera join Ibu. Bu Winda ini ada trouble di jaringan Ibu. Pak Beni izin eh, mahasiswa internasional kas dapat dibantu Bapak untuk setting virtual backgroundnya Bapak. Oke, okay, Bu Ayu. Ya, matunun. Ya, makasih ya, Pak. Ya, sebentar, Bu. Mikronya ganti, Bu. Ya, bentar, Bu. Diganti, Bu. Settingnya mana? Oke. Pak Gama, kita cari background, Bu. Oh, itu, itu. Video, video. Eh, jangan yang itu, ya. Nah, ya. Terus lain. Mana itu? Background yang mana? Ada. Dah. Kirim pe ya. Background yang. Bapa ibu dari. Fakultas Hukum UNES izin berkenan dapat dinyalakan videonya dan setting virtual backgroundnya Bapak Ibu Maturnuun. Mahasiswa internasional kelas dinyalakan videonya dan setting virtual backgroundnya. Backgroundnya di mana Bu? Minta dikirim Bu. Di WA Group ada Bapak. Oh WA Group. Ya, makasih Bu. Ye, sami-sami. Ye, apa tuh nih prosesnya nih? J. Ibu Ketua mohon izin menyampaikan screening peserta sudah selesai. Ini ada empat di waiting room tidak terdata. Sementara belum saya admit. Thank <laughs> you. 
kita masih coba-coba background bayur belum kelihatan gambarnya Ye, jika tidak memungkinkan berkenan videonya saja tidak apa-apa Bapak oh, Ye, ya. ini Ye, ini segera kami mulai sebentar lagi Ayub, Ibu, ya tunggu lima menit lagi ya. Iya. Yes, Tiga yeah. sampai lima menit lagi. Teman. Nanti di record ya. Lagi ya. Di record. Eh, sampun Ibu. Belum ini sudah di record. Udah. Dari host. Sudah belum? Pak Wahyudin. Oke. Okay. Loh, ada yang admit itu selain saya ke admit ini. Ibu, ada ya. Bu Ketua izin menyampaikan ada yang admit itu tadi saya nggak tahu. Tadi masih empat, tapi sekarang masih satu. Tidak terdata. Enggak, enggak apa-apa. Ini kan uh, sampai jam 10 lebih itu peruntukannya untuk uh, mahasiswa kita. Oh, jih. Jih, jih. Uh, Bapak Suhedi mohon izin jika memungkinkan dapat geser atau di off kan enggak pakai virtual Bapak. Uh, sedikit nyaru tidak terlihat Bapak. Jih. Yeah. Jika memungkinkan geser dapat geser, namun jika tidak memungkinkan virtual backgroundnya dapat di off kan. Jadi Bapak Ibu peserta eh, terima kasih berkenan menunggu sebentar. Bentar lagi kita akan mulai bagi Bapak Ibu yang belum menghidupkan video berkenan untuk menghidupkan video. Ya, dan jika dimungkinkan untuk dapat setting virtual background Ketika mulai acara berkenan untuk tetap di mute Bapak Ibu internal Fakultas Hukum jika memungkinkan dapat di setting virtual backgroundnya bagi yang belum maturnuun. Ya mahasiswa internasional kelas dapat di setting virtual backgroundnya. Pak Unggul Sugeng Rawo. Pak Unggul, selamat datang. Pak Unggul. Pak Unggul berkenan dinyalakan Bapak videonya. Siap. Ye, Mas Tidak bisa Asep. background ini. Iya, karena... tidak apa-apa Bapak. Dinyalakan mawon. Videonya dinyalakan. Ye. Ya, sudah 35 menit ini Mbak Ayu. Mungkin bisa dimulai. Ye, Bu. <tuh> Yeah. Bapak Ibu peserta Third Icil Eva UNES Sebentar lagi kita akan mulai Berkenan untuk dinyalakan Videonya yang belum yeah, Bapak Ibu Internal Fakultas Hukum UNES Mahasiswa Internasional Kelas Yang belum menyalakan video Berkenan untuk dapat Dinyalakan videonya Tidak tacap sih Ya Selamat pagi Bu Ayu. Ji, selamat pagi Bapak. Dengan Pak Ipal di sini Bu. 
Ye, Pak Ipa, selamat ya, bergabung. Salam ini kenal. Saya uh, dengan Pak Marlas Huta Soid, dia tidak bisa bergabung dari akun emailnya karena ada bermasalah. Apakah yang bersangkutan bisa bersama-sama dengan saya di satu layar ini, Bu? Jika ada kendala, gih, enggak apa-apa, Pak. Enggak apa-apa. Oke, baik. Gih, Pak Ipa. Gih. Terima kasih, Bu Ayu. Ini orangnya, gih. orangnya gih. beliau ini, Bu. Ini. Gih, gih, Pak Ipa. Ya, Karena sebentar pagi, lagi mau mulai. Selamat pagi. Gih, selamat pagi. Kita udah lewat 10 menit nih, Ayu. Ya, menunggu apa-apa dari Ibu Ketua. Mau, ya, mau, mau, mau Sudah, mau. sudah kita mulai aja. Iya. Game. Ya, mulai. Oke, okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. I would like to inform you about the rules of the participants in this conference. So first, the conference will divide into two sessions. The first will be the session with our invited speakers. And second is the chamber presentation. So please also only share the link Zoom with your co-author or author on your paper. And then the third, rename your Zoom ID with the registered name. And the fourth, if it is possible, please change your virtual background into virtual background from the committee. The five, mute your... The six will be question and answer will be open after the speaker's presentation. If you want to ask a question, please write it on your chat column and there will be a lot of door prize for the choices questions. For the certificate will be given at the end of this webinar. The committee are allowed to remove the participants who doesn't obey the rules. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are begin this conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third international studies by Faculty of Law, Universitas Negeri Semarang. I'm your host, Martinda Intan Permatahati, and I'm very happy to be able to meet all participants from all around the world, even through virtual. And on behalf of Universitas Negeri Semarang, I would like to say thanks for your participation in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin this conference, first, let's say thanks to Allah who has been giving us guidance, happiness, healthy and mercy so we can participate in this event without any obstacle. Ladies and gentlemen, now, the Honorable Vice Rector of Planning and Partnership Affairs of Universitas Negeri Semarang, the Honorable the Dean of Faculty of Law, and please give a warm welcome to our invited speakers, the Honorable Professor Dr. Thomas Mitch, adjunct professor at the University of Göttingen, Germany, the Honorable Dr. Haji Ahmad Zaharuddin Sani Ahmad Sabri from University Utara Malaysia, the Honorable Dr. Nikki Jones from School of Law and Justice, University of Southern Queensland. The Honorable Dr. Ikra Anugrah, MSCMA, from Center for Southeast Asian Studies, Kyoto University, Japan. 
And the last but not least, Dr. Rodia SPD SHMSI. She is also the Dean of Faculty of Law, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Ladies and gentlemen, to begin the opening ceremony, I would like to request to all participants to stand. Let us sing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Ada suara Ladies and gentlemen, you may proceed to your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda will be the committee chair's report for Mrs. Rahayu Ferry Anitasari, SHMKN. The time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Intan. Can you hear my voice? Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, praise and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of his blessing, we can hold this international conference in this morning. On behalf of the steering committee of the International Conference on Legal Studies, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our Vice Rector for Partnership Affairs, who already joined us and will open this international conference the speaker, and also to all conference participants. In line with Universitas Negeri Semarang and our faculty anniversary celebration, we held this international conference for the third time. It should be held on 1st of April 2020 in Semarang, but due to the condition of the pandemic COVID-19, and we as committee are very concerned on the health and safety of the participants, and the speaker. So we held this international conference on this day virtually. Third issue is all by several university, such as University of Indonesia, Diponegoro University, Jember University, Janabadra University, Indonesia Hindu University, Semarang University, Universitas Sebelas Maret, Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta, Patimura University, University of Pelita Harapan, Constitutional Court of the Republic of Indonesia, the House of Representative of the Republic of Indonesia, and Universitas Negeri Semarang. 
Last but not least, University of Muhammadiyah Malang and Jayabaya University as our co-host. Thank you for joining and the trust that has been given to us. Our warmest welcome to our distinguished speakers for this international conference are Prof. Dr. Thomas Smith, Dr. Nikki Jones, Dr. Rodia, Dr. Haji Ahmad Saharuddin Sal Ahmad Sabri, and Dr. Ikro Anugrah. Thank you for spending time with us today. That's all for me. Thank you for attending this conference and have a good day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now the next agenda will be the welcoming speech from our Vice Sector for, of Planning and Partnership Affairs for Dr. Hendi Pratama, SPDMA. The time is yours. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the time. My name is Hendy Pratama, and I'm the acting vice rector for a partnership. <laughs> and, and today we would like to, I'd like to represent our rector, Professor Dr. Fatur Rahman M. Hum. And uh, because it's at the same time at the other event. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome Dr. Nick Jones. First of all, uh, please, host, can you try to mute some of the noise? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to welcome Dr. Nikki Jones. Hi, Dr. Nikki. Uh, from the School of Law and Justice, University of Southern Queensland, which I believe that Queensland is one of the most beautiful uh, state in Australia because I've been there for two years. Uh, it's been a good memory for me too. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Ikra Anugrah, MSc, MA, from Kyoto University, Japan. And also Dr. Haji Ahmad Zaharuddin Sani from UM, UUM, UUM College, College of Arts and Science, University Utara Malaysia. Welcome to Semarang online. And also Professor Dr. Thomas Smith from Faculty of Law, George August University, Göttingen, Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, one more. Our beautiful Dean one of the most beautiful dean in the faculty, because the only one, Dr. Rodia, uh, dean of the Faculty of Law, University of UNES, Indonesia. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are from UNES, Universitas Negeri Semarang, and our vis vision is to become a conservation-oriented university with international recognition and we have a spirit to be a house of science which develop civilization and today we have this uh, program and it is hosted by faculty of law and we are very proud of this uh, very young faculty but now the faculty itself is very developing and we are proud of that Thank you very much also for this international conference on Indonesian legal, legal studies, which we believe that it is very important for our society, for Indonesia, for our city in Semarang too, and also for people around the world that legal studies have been important now more than ever. What I mean here is that this is very, very crucial for the life of everybody without you realize or not, people who are born into this world, they, whether they want it or not, whether they realize it or not, they are bound into rules and regulation. And you are the uh, people who are studying this on how to govern people under the law and order. I think this is very important for us to understand that law is binding for everyone. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is our milestone at our university. We have two lines here at the research university and teaching university. At the end of the day in 2023, we would like to be, uh, we would like to down, make downstream and business research. And as a teaching university, we would like to be the center of uh, reference or center of excellence of teaching institute or higher education. And this is our preference program to have human resources and also international teaching institute that we would like to become and international accreditation and certification. We also invest ourselves in innovation and publication. And also we have here the good governance and excellent service. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are proud that we are accredited A. I think we have to repeat it over and over because not many universities in Indonesia are accredited A. So it is a point of excellence for us. Now, the thing is that we also have four uh, programs internationally certified by AUNQA, that's Indonesian Education Department, Biology Department, and also Physical Education and Economic Development. Uh, currently, we have this rank from uni rank, and in Indonesia, we're number 10 in ASEAN, we are number 22 in Asia, we are number 120, and in the world, in 606. This is not really a mainstream rank, but we're quite proud of it uh, because uh, at least we can, uh, we can manage to, uh, to go to certain threshold on the world's universities. Uh, this is our publication. Uh, we start from very low level of publication, but now in 2020, we are proud that this year we have 1,606 uh, articles in uh, Scopus Index journals. And also we have some international networking with Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, China, India, Turkey, New Zealand, Australia, South Korea. So this is these are our projects and these are our partners here. And we are glad here that today we have some speakers from Malaysia, from Germany, from Australia, and also from Japan. And we would like to, uh, we believe that this is not the last that we, we will work together and it will be maintained in the future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is if you open the website today that the countdown to ICILS online 2020 has reached zero. It means that this is the time for us to start. And I believe that we will have fruitful discussion, enlightenment, and also the results of this conference would be enough to be part of the recommendation for our government, recommendation for also our universities and also for the betterment of humankind under the better like legal studies. Thank you very much. That's the time for me and uh, my rector, Professor Dr. Uh, Fatur Rahman sent best regards to everybody here. Have a good conference. Thank you very much. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our photo session. Please turn on your video so we can take a photo session together. Okay, now let's start for the first slide. Okay, um, Mr. Ali Masha. I cannot see you here. Okay, now, okay. Let's take it. One, two, two thumbs up, three. Okay, great. Now the second slide. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, great. Now the next slide, the third slide. Okay, hello, Prof. Thomas. Thank you for joining us. And now let's start the photo session one two three great okay and then the next slide the fourth okay one two three okay 
the five sides. Okay, one, two. Uh, I cannot see uh, Salma in here. Please turn on your video. Okay, thank you. And one, two, three. Okay, the last slide. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to um, the time that we are waiting for. We are going to have our speaker session. And ladies and gentlemen, that will be a lot of door prize for uh, participants that ask a question. So uh, if you want to ask a question, please write it on your chat. Okay, on your chat column. And please welcome here the moderator, Mr. Dr. Dani Muhtada, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, um, Intan, the master of ceremony. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, speakers, the presenters, all participants of the third international conference on Indonesian legal studies. My name is Dani Muhtada. I am the moderator of this panel discussion. Today, we will be discussing a topic on law and globalization. We will discuss various international perspectives on the connection between law and globalization. And today we are very honored and very lucky uh, that we have five distinguished speakers from five different countries and they are with us right now. And uh, let me welcome and introduce these speakers to you. The first speaker is uh, Dr. Ahmad Zaharuddin Sani, Ahmad Sabri from Malaysia. Good morning, Pak Zahar. How are you? Are you with us? Ya, yeah. selamat okay. pagi. Selamat pagi, Pak. Terima yeah. kasih sudah bergabung. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Zaharuddin is lecturer at University of Northern Malaysia. He was also a research associate at Monash University of Australia. He is currently serving as a strategic communication officer for Malaysian government. <laughs> At this conference, he will be presenting a paper on law and globalization, focusing on the emergence and impact of Malaysia global regulatory <laughs> governance. Thanks for joining us. The second speaker will be Dr. Nikki Jones from Australia. Good afternoon, Dr. John Jones. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> What time is it? <laughs> it's afternoon, <laughs> 1.30. Good morning to you. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks for joining us. So Dr. Jones is a senior lecturer at School of Law and Justice, University of Southern Queensland, Australia. She has been teaching at the university for 13 years. And she is teaching several subjects, including public international law, administrative law, as well as human rights and anti-discrimination law. And she is also admitted to practice in the Supreme Court of Queensland and the Federal and High Courts of Australia. For this conference, uh, she will be presenting a paper on law and the international community looking into the post-COVID-19 future. This is really a very important topic to discuss nowadays. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Jones. Thank you. The third speaker will be Professor Thomas Smith from Germany. Good morning, Professor Smith. Are you Good morning? <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for joining us. So, Professor Smith is a professor at George August University in Göttingen, Germany. He was also a visiting professor at the University, University of Latvia and the Hanoi Law University. He is currently serving as a visiting professor at the Faculty of Law, Gajah Mada University in Indonesia. His teaching subjects include constitutional law local government law and international organization law. And he will be talking about globalization of law from the European perspective. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. The fourth, the fourth speaker is Dr. Rodia from Indonesia. Good morning, Dr. Rodia. Good morning. She is the Dean of the Faculty of Law at Universitas Negeri Semarang. She has been teaching at the faculty for about 20 years. And she is teaching several subjects, including theory of legislation, research methodology, and local autonomy law. And at this conference, she will be talking about the government's proposal to introduce, to introduce omnibus law in Indonesia. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Rodia. Thank you. 
last but not least, I will introduce Dr. Ikra Anugrah from Kyoto University. Good morning, Dr. Ikra. Good morning, Padani. Thanks, Joe, for joining us. Uh, Dr. Anugrah is a postdoctoral fellow at the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at Kyoto University, Japan. He finished his PhD degree from Northern Illinois University, United States. He was also a correspondent fellow at New Mandala, which is published by Australian National University in Australia. His teaching and research interests include democracy, statecraft, social movements, and development. And for this conference, he will be presenting on legal advocacy as a strategy for agrarian activism in Indonesia. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So uh, for today's discussion, I will give time to speak first to Dr. Ahmad Zaharuddin because uh, he will need to leave us soon. And then uh, after that, I will give time to Dr. Nikki Jones and then Professor Thomas Schmidt and then Dr. Radia and finally to Dr. Ikra Anugrah. And I'd like to remind everyone that each speaker will have 20 minutes to talk. And after all the speakers finish their talk, I will open the QA session, question and answer, for about 60 minutes. So if you have any question or comments, please write it down in the chat column of the Zoom meeting. I will then pick and read the question during the QA session. All right. Now, without further ado, now I'm inviting Dr. Ahmad Zaharuddin to speak before us. Dr. Zaharuddin, the floor yeah. is yours, please. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, selamat pagi. Good afternoon to everybody. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Fakultas Hukum UNES uh, for uh, engaging us through this Zoom. Uh, so we can have a uh, knowledge sharing between us and special congratulations to the Dean uh, for inviting me and all to my brother and sister at UNES. Uh, thank you and welcome to Zoom. All right, so uh, my topic today is about law and globalization, the emergence and impact of Malaysia global regulatory governance. So, as a table of contents that uh, I would like to discuss today is about the introduction is about the world situation uh, in 2020, where the year where everybody began to be selfish. And we talk about the global regulatory governance, why we need one, and the challenge of global regulatory governance, and about the global regulatory, uh, regulatory governance Malaysian style how Malaysia make it happen, why are Malaysia GRG and regulatory reform worth learning from. Uh, I'll talk about let's make use of Asian, Asian as the best platform, Asian versus EU, and a little bit of conclusion. So to, to begin with, uh, as everybody know, 2020 is a, a year where COVID-19 infectious disease caused by newly discovered strain of coronavirus uh, had been a, a very, uh, what we call that, effects to everybody. To fight this pandemic, the Malaysian government is erecting barriers to the movement of peoples and goods, unlike anything since their independence in 1957. In some way, the new barriers are even tighter than ever. As the number of fatalities from the COVID-19 continue to decrease, that toll had dropped to merely now. In Malaysia, for the last uh, one week, there will be uh, no fatality at all. Where the number of recovered patients had exceeded the number of current coronavirus patients in the, and the government ready to ease some restriction. Right now, that's, we're having the numbers around the 96% of total success case meaning that we are only left, left with 4% of patients. So uh, by doing so, that's, we need to open up uh, the country so we can boost our economy. So there are two sides of the global, globalization coin. On the positive side, the cross-border flow of people, 
goods, money and information creates new wealth and opportunity. But on the negative side, it can exacerbate global disparities and able cross-border crime and allow for the rapid spread of disease as what happened right now. The crisis and necessary public health response are causing the largest and fastest decline in international flow in modern history. On the far current forecast, where in inevitably rough of the stage call for 13 to 32% decline in merchandise trade, 30 to 40% reduction, reduction of foreign direct investment, and 44 to 80% drop of international airline passenger in 2020 alone. This number imply a major rollback roll roll of globalization recent gain, but they do not signal a fundamental collapse of international market integration. And in Malaysia, we have already studied about this thing and about the economic sector, it will take another four years to recover. And I don't know what will happen to Indonesia. So in Malaysia, uh, for hospitality, will take more than four years to recover. So to ensure this thing, let's go to another, my, another main topic here. To ensure this thing, the development and industrial country will not fall to the economy to this pandemic. A new measure is needed. What's the measure that we needed? We need to open up and make ease for international businesses to operate in Malaysia with immediate effect. To do so, local law need to be global and easy. In the globalization process, including freedom of capital mobility, was making national government more difficult for developing and industry countries. And there is a need for international regulation to minimize costs and also enable developing country to undertake gradual strategy integration into the world economy. By now, we have to move on. We know that we're having pandemic right now. We know that the disease can be separate, but what the choice that we have? The only thing that if we can prevent the spread of the disease, we can contain the spread of the disease, then we need to move on. We need to open up our own market. As what I said, by doing so, we need to make local law to be global and easy. The market-driven globalization with social politics and culture as also economic dimension is creating two worlds. For those include the world is their oyster and for the many who are excluded, that's not what we want. There is a rising frustration and social discontent in society, which is making national government impossible even there is no international governance to cope with the problem. So what we should do? We need to have a global regulatory governance in the Malaysian style. What is the Malaysian style? So I will short form the global regulatory governance as GRG. GRG is a systematic application of tool, institutions, and procedure that government can mobilize to ensure that regulatory outcome are effective, transparent, inclusive, and sustained. May I repeat about this thing? So what we need is something that effective, transparent, inclusive, and sustained. The use of sophisticated of GRG instrument have increased dramatically since the year 2000s. Special, specifically, participatory and evidence-based rule making has shown a great uptake by economists from all around the world. Buying doing so, meaning that when we open up, the other countries are trying to join us. Why? Because we can create a new block of economy. For instance, Currently, there are 34 OECD countries and at least 
29 OECD countries have RIA system in place. Also, more than 120 countries in the world, including developed and developing nations, have regulatory agencies that, in one way or another, solicit comments from the general public on the purpose of regulation before they are adopted. So meaning that what we try to do is not something in silo. It's already that been done in other country. GRG has been instrumental regarding Malaysian goal of achieve in high income and developed status. Our regulatory, regulatory reform journey started decades ago with a process of deregulation. As in many other countries, the focus of this reform has moved from only reducing and simplifying existing regulation to establishing a sound regulatory management system that through the implementation of GRP ensure that new and current regulation are effective in addressing policy problem and kept fit for purpose. Important milestone in Malaysian GRP journey include the strong and formal involvement of the private sector. We are open up for the private sector to join in through the creation of one institution. We call it as a Pemuda. What is Pemuda? It's our special task force to facilitate businesses operates in Malaysia. So another key achievement in our journey was the adoption of our national policy on the development and implementation of regulation. We call it NPDIR, which provide the policy framework for adoption of GRP in our policy and regulatory processes. More recently, our Malaysian Productivity Rule 3 call for the enhancements of our whole of government approach to GRP to ensure broader adoption of by all regulators and to establish metric to monitor progress at the nation and sub-nation level. Concerning the national policy on GRG, other instrument, instrument that currently being used to review existing regulation on modernizing business licensing, reducing unnecessary regulatory burden, and cutting all the red tape. So why are Malaysian GRG and global regulatory reform worth learning from? Number one, because Malaysia involved the private sector through a high level task force known as Bermuda, as I mentioned before, with a great success documented both by the process and the outcome. Number two, why we need to learn from Malaysia? Because Malaysia had created a comprehensive institutional ecosystem supporting the adoption of GRG which enable the meticulous implementation of various aspects of the reform. Number three, Malaysia long-term development vision, as well as the medium-term national development plan have included GRG commitments for the last few decades. This provide high level support and continuity to this agenda. Last but not least, Malaysia have moved from deregulatory approach to regulatory reform towards a complementary focus on regulatory quality. So let's make Asian as the best platform of GRG. If you all remember why we established Asian, Number one is to accelerate the economic growth, social progress, and culture development in the region through joint endeavor in the spirit of quality and partnership to strengthen the foundation for a prosperous 
and peaceful community of South Asian nation. So, with the, this agenda, Asian can be a new economic bloc in the world. If GRG can be implemented among the 10 countries, the vision for the Asian Economic Community, AEC, is a single market with a free flow of goods, capital, and skill level, which should help the region compete with the likes of China for foreign investment. Just imagine what Asian can do with the combining the economic force of a resource rich and growing market of more than 600 million people, includes the wealthy Singapore, one of the world's most developed countries, all rich Brunei, developing states such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines, and the Vietnam, and the poorer nations like Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar. Just imagine if all of these 10 countries combine joint venture in doing economic block. So can the Asian be the new EU, the European Union, with implementation of GRG? I believe the Asian will overcome the challenges and remain united and independent. Learning from the experience of EU, Asian will redouble its efforts to ensure that it's not viewed as an endless project. Instead, Asia must ensure that it enjoy the support of the 600 million citizens of Asia and become the new economic bloc. Rise to my conclusion. The main question in GRG is sovereignty. Practically, sovereignty means that the one state cannot demand the other state take any particular internal action. Under the concept of state sovereignty, no state has the authority to tell another state how to control its internal affairs. Sovereignty both grants the limits power. It gives states complete control over the territory while restricting the influence that state has on, our, on one another. So globalization is changing this view of sovereignty. Similarly, states no longer view the treatment of citizens of one state as only the exclusive concern of that state. International human rights is based on the idea that the entire global community is responsible for the right of every individual. So as a take note for today, together we are strong, divided we fall. Kalau bahasa Indonesianya, bersatu kita teguh, bercerai, Jangan yang satu lagi ya. And to, and to become new economic bloc, we need to have a new norm of global legal agreement. As what English proverbs say, he that will eat the fruit must climb the tree. Kanda Pak Dani, terima kasih. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Zaharudin, for your explanation. So Dr. Saharuddin explained us uh, about the practice of global regulatory governance in Malaysia and suggest that the ASEAN can be the best platform of GRG in this region and potentially to be the new European Union of the Southeast Asia. Yeah. All right. Okay, Quite hopefully. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, then I will invite uh, the next speaker. Dr. Nikki Jones, uh, she will be presenting about law and international community looking into the, po the post-COVID-19 future. All right, uh, Dr. Jones, this is floors uh, for you. Thank you. Please. Yep.
Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu yang saya hormati. Selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, thank you. Saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih atas mengundang saya di sini. Thank you, thank you. Di Universitas Negeri Samarang. Excellent, excellent, thanks. Excellent, um, thanks. I'm afraid the rest is in English. Yes, that's perfect Indonesian language. <laughs> thanks. I had originally, thank you. I had originally intended to talk about globalization and the international community with reference to this auspicious year of 2020. Uh, in English, we have the expression 2020 vision, which means to have uh, good eyesight, to be able to see things normally and clearly. This year seemed to be an appropriate time to look around with 2020 vision and to consider some questions about the role of public international law in a globalized world. Now, I suspect we are all thinking very differently about the international community and about life and work in our hometowns, our communities and the international community broadly. Uh, we have had to change our plans for travel. We have had to change our movements in our local communities, um, uh, let alone further travel, further communities. What features of globalization will change post coronavirus? An important threshold question might also be, uh, what is globalization? What does it represent when we're talking about the development of the law that is expected to address its various problems? Although the term globalization is commonly used, um, it has different meanings for different people and different entities in the international community. Uh, I will not spend time uh, attempting to address the or, or discuss the various meanings or, or trying to, to provide an answer. I'm reassured by legal scholar Professor Wolfgang Friedman's observation that over thousands of years, the most powerful minds of all nations have been unable to agree on a universal definition of law. Although I don't believe that Professor Friedman turned his attention to the term globalization, I'm confident that he would have reached a similar conclusion about it if he had. The current coronavirus crisis has now raised particular questions in relation to globalization. And I, I, I very much appreciated the presentation given by the previous speaker. I think mine <laughs> follows quite neatly from it. Academic and media commentary currently fluctuates between a warning that COVID-19 means the end of globalization and predicting that the virus hi uh, highlights the importance of globalization. So these are, of course, very timely questions. As we know, the coronavirus pandemic has shut down many of the everyday activities of a globalized world. International travel has slowed or stopped. Countries have closed their borders. Domestic and international tourism have ground to a halt. Foreign workers and students have returned home and local populations are in lockdown to an extent that would have been unimaginable to us this time last year. The nation state has never seemed more important or omnipotent with countries enacting wide ranging restrictions in response to the pandemic. Domestic commercial activity and economies have declined, jobs are cut, unemployment is rising in many countries, national laws and regulations are prioritizing nationals over foreigners and globalization has imploded. To quote one, uh, uh, one commentator. My paper will start by discussing the novel coronavirus disease, which we now commonly refer to as COVID-19, and will consider public health restrictions that have been imposed to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic with reference to human rights law in my jurisdiction of Queensland. In this discussion, I'll mention briefly the challenges to global governance that the COVID-19 crisis has brought to prominence. Uh, as, we, as we remember, because it wasn't long ago, in late December 2019, international media started to report the rapid spread of a novel coronavirus disease starting in Wuhan city in China. There was increasing international awareness of its transmission in China and into other countries, including Australia, throughout January 2020. Uh, on 29th of January 2020, my home state of Queensland became the first state in Australia to declare a public health emergency due to the outbreak of COVID-19 in China, its pandemic potential due to the, the rapid spread of cases to other countries and the public health implications within Queensland. And the public health uh, emergency order was declared for all of Queensland for seven days, <laughs> which in retrospect seems almost laughable. And it was extended a number of times and it's still in place. 
on the 30th of January 2020, the Director General of the World Health Organization, the WHO, declared that COVID-19 was a public health emergency of international concern. On the 11th of March 2020, the Director General of the WHO declared that COVID-19 could be characterized as a global pandemic. Uh, since then, data collected by the WHO underpin those declarations. Uh, as at last Friday, 26th of June, the number of confirmed cases worldwide sat at 9.8 million across 216 countries with almost 500,000 confirmed deaths. And those numbers are rising with each, report, uh, with each period of reporting. In the current pandemic, there's an important role to play for a central agency, an international agency such as the WHO, which can impartially share public health information, coordinate equipment and expertise, and advise states on the best responses to the coronavirus crisis. And uh, uh, individual recommendations as well, all sorts of information for uh, countries and, and people in different circumstances. In its founding constitution, the WHO urged all states to commit to the health of all peoples, which, said the constitution, is fundamental to the attainment of peace and security, fundamental objectives of the United Nations, and depends on the fullest cooperation of individuals and states. The constitution also offers a salient warning to states who adopt isolationism and exclusionary policies by saying, unequal development in different countries in the promotion of health and control of disease, especially communicable disease, is a common danger. Uh, there's also an important role to play for individual nations in the international community. States, all states developed and developing, uh, must be seen to take responsible and intelligent action to restrict COVID-19 transmission and to share information and resources with neighboring states to assist with their responses to the coronavirus. Over the past few months, we've seen that some states responded rapidly to early warnings about COVID-19 by, for example, closing their borders, declaring a national public health emergency, uh, imposing social distancing, testing early and often, and preparing um, equipment, uh, health equipment, such as personal protective equipment and ventilators. Jurisdictions that acted early, like Queensland, my state of Queensland, and also countries such as South Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Georgia, Costa Rica, there are a range of others, appear to have had better public health outcomes. Um, as is also apparent from news reports of COVID-19 infection and transmission rates in the USA, states that dismissed global warnings about COVID-19 by the WHO and other expert bodies such as their own Centers for Disease Control uh, because such messages were unpopular or politically inconvenient or called for a cooperative response that perhaps was not uh, in line with the desired uh, steps, have not fared well. Along with reports of nationalist sentiment and protectionism, the pandemic has also generated international cooperation. For example, scientists and medical professionals have collaborated to identify the virus's genome sequence and share information on how the virus interacts with the human body. Scientists around the world are currently working on various treatments and vaccines for COVID-19, and also to attempt to share those on a, a, an equal and equitable basis with the international community. <clears throat> and I mentioned one example of that uh, in my paper. There's a group called the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, which is an international public health coalition that's currently working on um, attempts to develop and fairly distribute a vaccine for COVID-19. Human rights challenges are also um, an area of, of much debate, a topic of much debate in Australia and uh, elsewhere. And the human rights challenges created by the COVID-19 restrictions um, in Australia have been the focus of considerable debate. In recent months, restrictions on movements and gatherings have been imposed by the different states and territories in Australia, resulting in a patchwork of laws restricting individual and commercial activities in response to perceived levels of risk in the different jurisdictions. And this has fluctuated. Um, just recently, restrictions came in uh, imposing severe lockdowns in Victoria in response to waves of, of, uh, of, of cases there. And uh, Queensland is currently in the process of opening its borders to all states and territories except for Victoria. So um, that's of course, an interesting political situation as well as an interesting constitutional situation. Um, in Queensland, uh, legislation that was enacted on the 18th of March, 2020 
empowered the Chief Health Officer, who's a senior official in Queensland, and other emergency officers to implement social distancing measures, including regulating mass gatherings, isolating or quarantining people suspected or known to have been exposed to COVID-19, and protecting vulnerable populations, such as the elderly. At this stage in Australia, in mid-March 2020, there were 414 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and five confirmed deaths nationally, with 94 confirmed cases in Queensland. Um, cases were spreading rapidly. There was still relatively little known about the virus. People were very scared. Um, <clears throat> from the 19th of March, the day after the legislation entered into force, the Chief Health Officer issued public health, uh, health directions in Queensland every day or couple of days in relation to different topics, including trading hours, gatherings, aged care, the upcoming local government elections that we had in Queensland, border restrictions, uh, non-essential business closures, corrective services facilities, schools and early childhood exclusions. On the 2nd of April, the Chief Health Officer issued a comprehensive public health direction called the Home Confinement Moving and Gathering Direction. And the purpose, the, the stated purpose was to assist in containing or to respond to the spread of COVID-19 within the community. It imposed severe lockdowns. Um, a home confinement except for 14 permitted purposes for which people could leave their homes and it limited gatherings in private residences as well as commercial premises. These restrictions affected movement and gatherings across the community in contexts such as school, tertiary education, work, hospitality, court proceedings, uh, family get-togethers, um, sporting and community events, public entertainment, tourism, travel and holidays. These restrictions, as the previous speaker said, they were like nothing that we had ever seen before. I'm sure all of you have experienced similar restrictions in your jurisdictions in the past four months. In fact, that's why many of us are here attending this conference online. <clears throat> the Chief Health Officer's reasons for making the public health directions that imposed the COVID-19 restrictions in Queensland were obvious to most people who had followed the news. Uh, in addition, the Queensland Government announced the restrictions, explained them um, in, 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 in a fair amount of detail. In numerous public and media statements, the health minister explained their context, purpose, scope and limited duration. There was a sunset clause in the amendments that mean that they expire uh, after a year. So th there was considerable information and uh, a lot of community knowledge about why these serious restrictions were being imposed. But in Queensland, they did raise important questions about human rights. And the questions were particularly apt, particularly timely, because last year the Queensland Parliament enacted new human rights legislation. There is a Human Rights Act 2019 in Queensland that was proclaimed into force from the 1st of January 2020, just in time to apply to the COVID-19 restrictions. The Human Rights Act protects 23 human rights, mostly the civil and political rights that are quite commonly um, included, but also two economic, social and cultural rights. So that makes it quite groundbreaking for a Western liberal and common law tradition, uh, a, a, a country, a jurisdiction with a, um, a liberal and common law tradition, and also makes it quite innovative for Australia generally. Uh, there are also various duties and obligations imposed on all branches of government. Not surprisingly, the COVID-19 restrictions restricting movement and gatherings breached a number of human rights. The most obvious of these was the right to freedom of movement protected under section 19 of the Human Rights Act, although other rights were, were demonstrably and were, were expressly stated to be restricted, such as rights to privacy, peaceful assembly, freedom of expression, the right to take part in public life, rights to liberty, etc. Section 19 provides that every person who is lawfully in Queensland has the right to move freely within the state and to enter and leave Queensland and has the freedom to choose where to live. Obviously, the restrictions um, curtailed that right, as well as a number of others. In addition to protecting human rights, as I'm sure many, if not all of you would know, international human rights law provides that, that, that many human rights, most many human rights can be limited in prescribed circumstances. Sometimes those circumstances are spelled out in, in treaties. Sometimes the right itself will provide for its own limitations, but, but the potential to limit human rights recognizes um, political realities and, and, and practical realities, natural emergencies and, uh, and, and circumstances such as that. 
Section 13 of the Human Rights Act, the Queensland Act, um, provides that the 23 human rights in the Queensland legislation may be subject under law to reasonable limits that can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society in order to protect the rights of others or important public policy issues. So that's in line with the potential to limit human rights in certain um, fairly limited uh, situations. And uh, I don't have the scope in, in this paper or in this presentation to step through the various threshold questions and criteria that apply and the permissible limitations test, the balancing exercise that must be satisfied before a conclusion can be reached um, either by courts and tribunals or by public entities about whether a human rights limitation is reasonable and demonstrably justified under the Human Rights Act but a broad assessment of the relevant provisions suggests that the COVID-19 restrictions are not in breach of the Queensland legislation. The restrictions may be regarded as emergency measures that are unavoidable, specific to the COVID-19 public health emergency, and quite importantly, of finite duration. On balance, there may be reasonable and justifiable limitations on human rights in the current global coronavirus pandemic. <clears throat> The various detailed explanations that were provided when the amending legislation was passed, when the restrictions were actually imposed, the, 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 um, the simultaneous government explanations of the reasons, the context, the scope, the duration of the limitations added to um, the, the, the um, satisfied various criteria in the balancing exercise and brought what would otherwise be clear and indeed egregious breaches of of human rights within the permitted limitations provided under section 13 of the Human Rights Act and also broadly would satisfy the possibility of limitations under international human rights law. Uh, the non-governmental organization uh, Human Rights Watch advises that the scale and severity of the COVID-19 pandemic indicate that it's a sufficiently significant public health threat to justify restrictions on certain human rights, such as those that result from the imposition of quarantine or isolation limiting freedom of movement. Human Rights Watch at the same time also warns that governments should not impose overly broad restrictions that don't meet these criteria and recommends careful attention to human rights such as non-discrimination and human rights principles such as transparency and respect for human dignity. The Human Rights Act in Queensland doesn't unreasonably bind the government or public entities in their acts and decisions. Rather, its legislative objects are to encourage dialogue about human rights and also um, very clearly to develop a culture in Queensland's public sector that, that respects and promotes human rights. And that's quite important uh, in, in Queensland um, for reasons of our history of public administration and some uh, and, and particular concerns um, about that. Uh, importantly, the Human Rights Act doesn't overturn parliamentary supremacy. So that means that the Queensland Parliament may override the Human Rights Act expressly, may also amend it into uh, irrelevance or insignificance, although undoubtedly it would pay a political price if it did that. Uh, in practice, in, in many countries, there are reasons why governments restrict the human rights of their populations. The challenge for governments and communities alike is always to ensure that restrictions on human rights are indeed reasonable and justifiable as required under balancing exercises in legislation such as Queensland's Human Rights Act and more broadly permitted under the international human rights treaties. International human rights law offers a salutary reminder to communities as well as governments of its overarching purpose, which is to protect people against government mistreatment and to restrain governments from acting in ways that harm people and harm their human rights. The COVID-19 pandemic, as, as, as we can see all around us, is a truly global problem. It's an extraordinary situation that's confronted all countries around the world at the same time, an urgent problem that calls for global solutions. Yet the central agency, the United Nations Global Health Agency that is well placed to help, uh, to help address it, to help deal with it, has not been without critics for its role during this and indeed previous pandemics. And one of those, of course, is the US president, who has quite recently been, been one of its most vocal critics. Australia's prime minister has also um, uh, quite recently proposed a three-point plan to reform the governments of the WHO. And uh, some of the proposals will do things like create an independent review organization to examine the performance of the WHO in global health calamities, such as this one. 
Most controversially, the Prime Minister wants to empower the WHO to send teams of investigators into countries to determine the factors behind disease outbreaks. So unilaterally enter the country uh, without express permission or, or invitations from the particular states. And, um, and Prime Minister Morrison has argued that those, the powers of the investigators could be similar to the powers of, of weapons inspectors deployed to, to verify disarmament programs. <clears throat> the idea of a pandemic police raises some interesting issues in the context of international law as, as, we, would, as we would all uh, recognize. Few international organizations have the power to unilaterally enter a state to undertake an investigation. In the area of human rights, there are, um, there are certain procedures that are similar and, uh, and many states have extended standing invitations to the United Nations Human Rights Council to allow independent human rights experts, special rapporteurs, independent experts, um, the special procedures such as those to enter countries to assess compliance, but many states have not. The idea of a pandemic police um, is, is an interesting one. Uh, Professor Alison Duxbury of the University of Melbourne has suggested some, some, uh, some objections, some reasons why this, uh, this would be a questionable um, step, a questionable uh, measure. And she's noted that weapons inspectors gain their powers from treaties that address threats to international peace and security. Now, obviously the WHO's constitution notes that the health of all peoples is fundamental to the attainment of peace and security. The Security Council hasn't uh, embraced that idea with um, extensive enthusiasm. It's only once identified a pandemic as a threat to international peace and security. And that was in 2014 in the case of the, the Ebola outbreak in, in, in West African countries. So in the current circumstances, in the current pandemic, the idea that the WHO could turn into the policeman of global health is uh, unlikely to um, achieve considerable traction at this stage, it seems anyway. And uh, it's likely to remain the dream that will never happen as a former WHO legal counsel commented recently in a webinar I saw a, a week or so ago. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has indeed been global in its impact yet the legal responses, certainly the political responses, uh, while based on the advice of an international body, have remained intensely local. The pandemic reminds us not just of how interconnected the modern world has become, but of how important the role of each and every state is in securing a world that's safe for all of its citizens. And whether or not the global legal frameworks on public health that we currently have in place are still fit for purpose for an effective global public health response, is likely to be the subject of an intense and ongoing debate. So I shall leave that there without attempting to take it further or even to attempt some, uh, some answers. All right. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Jones. So you brought a very important issue on the restriction of human rights during the pandemic. And you mentioned that uh, the restriction of human rights during the pandemic may be regarded as emergency situation and avoidable and not in breach of Queensland law, right? And you also underline that although the COVID-19 pandemic has been global in its impact, but the legal responses have remained very local, introduced and enforced by just local or national governments. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for uh, your presentations. Before I invite uh, Professor Thomas, uh, to speak, uh, uh, to present the, uh, his paper. I would like to remind everyone that you could uh, send me a question in the chat uh, column of the Zoom meeting. So, uh, jadi Bapak Ibu bisa mengirimkan pesan pertanyaan di Zoom meeting. Nanti saya bacakan setelah ada sesi tanya jawab. All right, now I will invite uh, Professor Thomas. Uh, time is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Selamat siang. Selamat siang, Pak. <laughs> I'm happy to participate at this conference. It said that uh, we could not meet in Samarang. Actually, I am working as a guest lecturer in Yogyakarta, so not far from there. But I hope I will have the possibility to meet you all in person at a later occasion. I will talk today about 
globalization of law from the European perspective, because we have experiences with the Europeanization of law, which is some kind of a georegional version of the globalization of law. Uh, may I ask you, can you hear me okay? That's fine? Yes, yes, that's fine. And you can, that's you fine. can see my paper? Yeah. Yep. Okay, because okay. I have the alarm that the internet connection is not stable. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Um, what is globalization of law? I would like to give a rather narrow definition. The profound transformation or replacement of national domestic law by legal standards and other legal norms of global public international law. It's a form of internationalization of law. There have been two decades of a heterogeneous, often blurred discussion about the globalization of law, often rather from a political or social science than a legal science perspective. Is this discussion backed by hard facts or is it still wishful thinking? I'm skeptical. I would first want to point out to one important factor in the discussion about law and globalization, the unaffected sovereignty of the state, which gives the state control over all law valid on its territory. That means a globalization of law can only happen with the consent of the state. Maybe the state will not like it, but still it needs to consent, otherwise there will be no globalizing effect. So far, there are very, very limited replacements of national law by global international law. International treaties need to be implemented into the domestic law, but do not replace it. An exception is the United Nations Convention's on contracts for the international sale of goods, the CISG, an optional autonomous global sales law, which the part, parties of uh, international sales contracts can choose instead of their national laws. Furthermore, there is the growing influence of global standards and regulations on the national law. We can find examples in the WTO agreements in the UN Environmental and Climate Protection Agreements, in the Global Human Rights Treaties. And let me say that this is all still at a rather early stage. We are still at the beginning. What are the prospects? Are we on the way from economic globalization to globalization of law? Or are we on the way to deglobalization? With a regard to the still strong emphasis of the sovereignty of the state, in particular by developing countries and newly industrialized countries, I'm skeptical. Furthermore, there is a threat to globalization from nationalist populism a la Donald Trump. Make my country great again, that does not sound as being ready for globalization of law. You may know that in the Western countries, a discussion has started about deglobalization as consequence of the coronavirus crisis. I don't think that this will happen, but there will be a more critical look on the globalization. However, I think that this more critical perspective will finally favorize and not hinder the globalization of law. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to download my paper from my website. There you can find all details. Here I will only give a short summary about this historical precedent, the Europeanization of law. It's a kind of geo-regionalization. That means another form of internationalization of law. The background is the integration of Europe in a supranational union. The European Union is always underestimated in Asia and in Southeast Asia. It's not just an international organization. 
it's a non-state but state-like supranational organization of integration with an own legal order like a state and uh, with a uh, uh, large scale exercise of supranational public power in its member states, mainly by legislation and regulation. It's based on the concept of integration through law. The integration is based on law and the respect for law. The European Union is generally confined to past legal acts that the member states must implement, execute, and enforce. Compliance of the member states is essential since even small irregularities may cause serious distortions in the internal market and put into question the whole integration process. The union does not have any coercive powers to enforce its law in the member state. So it may be not a surprise that there is a strong emphasis on the rule of law. Furthermore, the European Union has its own powerful court of justice to ensure that the law is observed. That's original wording of Article 19 of the Treaty on the European Union. The European Court of Justice in Luxembourg virtually functions as a Supreme Court and Constitutional Court. National courts can ask it for preliminary rulings on the validity and interpretation of union law. What are now the characteristic features of European Union law? First, the autonomy of, for just a moment to make sure, yeah. First, the autonomy of uh, the European Union law. Second, its direct effect in the member states. Direct effect means that all public authorities are directly bound without intermediate national legislation or regulation except one kind of European law that's the directive. Third, the unity of union law. In all member states, without regard to the special features of the national law, the national values, or the national culture. Furthermore, there is the primacy of union law over national law. In case of conflict, the authorities in the member states must follow the union law and not apply the national law. Conflicts may be avoided by interpreting the national law in conformity with union law. This is the primacy in application, not in validity. That means a national law which violates union law does not become void, it's only inapplicable. However, the practical effect is rather the same. And it's even a primacy over national constitutional law, as long as the constitutional identity, the core of the institution of the member state is not concerned. What are now the factors which stimulate the Europeanization of law? First, there are far-reaching, abstractly formulated commitments in the treaties and later in the reform treaties on which the European Union is based. The full scope of them only became clear over time. The member states and the union institutions, they could not really know at the beginning what these commitments may mean. Second, there is the prominent role of the European Court of Justice as defender of union law and motor of integration. There has been an extensive judicial further development of law, often by the discovery of unwritten general principles of union law. This was necessary because many essential rules for the functioning of the union were not expressly needed Second, there is the obligation to interpret national law in conformity with the union law, which I have already mentioned. It had a strong 
harmonizing, assimilating effect even on the national law. Third, there is the focus of the European Court of Justice in its jurisprudence on the effectiveness, the effet utile of union law. The practical effectiveness of law is a dominant criterion in jurisprudence. Basically, this is just a consistent pursuit of the rule of law. As Dr. Pratena has said this morning, law is binding for everyone. It's just that. However, the practical effect has been very far reaching. And finally, there is a growing impact of the legislation of the union in more and more fields of law. This effect, however, was intended. This was not a surprise. Now I come to the fields and examples of the Europeanization of law. The most spectacular field is in the administrative law. Union law is generally executed on the basis of the national administrative law because it's executed by the member states, not by the union. This national administrative law has been heavily transformed by demanding European standards, which often forced member states to alter or to give up traditional concepts of their law. The standards were developed by the European Court of Justice in the way of judicial further development of law, just concretizing consistently and with a comparative approach, the requirements of a strict commitment to the rule of law. It's just that. In the 90s, there was an outcry of prominent scholars against this development, but it did not meet the support of most experts. I give you just some examples here in my oral presentation. In my paper, I give some more. Please be aware that all these examples have been triggered by dirty tricks of the member states to avoid compliance. All the principles which the European Court of Justice has developed were in cases where one or several member states tried to circumvent the law to get an unfair, unjust, advantage for their national businesses. First, we have the autonomy, the direct applicability, and the primacy of community law, about which I have already talked. Also, the obligation to interpret national law in conformity with community law. Then, there is an implementation which must happen under the national law, yes, the member states execute the union law on the basis of their national administrative law, but the European Court of Justice has stressed that this must under no circumstances affect the scope and the effectiveness of community law. This means that even there may be the necessity of the states to take coercive measures against their own citizens to enforce the community law. Furthermore, national courts must grant interim relief if it's necessary to enforce community law, regardless of any adverse provisions of the national law. This forced the United Kingdom to introduce interim relief against acts of parliament, which was absolutely incompatible with the fundamental doctrine of sovereignty of the parliament but that it was not important. They need to comply with European law. Concerning interim relief against the implementation of community law, there are, however, restrictive conditions formulated by the European Court of Justice. Why? Because often the states use this mechanism to hinder the effective execution of union law at all. The most spectacular example is the state liability for violations of union law. If the member states violate the European Union law, for example, do not execute and enforce it correctly, they must pay compensation to the citizen for any damages occurred by that. This obligation derives directly from union law. That means it doesn't matter if the state has such a 
state liability law or not. It is obliged by the European Union law. And even in cases where the violation of European Union law has been done by the parliament, by legislation, or by the Supreme Court. Another aspect is that all national law must be interpreted in conformity with all directives of the European Union to avoid any violation. Finally, uh, there we come to the precautions to ensure the correct implementation of directives. Directives, they are framework laws which do not apply directly in the member states. They need to be transposed into national law, like decisions of international organizations. But the member states have often been reluctant to do that. They have been lazy, usually in order to get advantage for their national businesses. So the European Court of Justice has developed some precautions to ensure the correct implementation of the directives in all member states in practice. Member states must implement directives by law, not by administrative practice or administrative provisions. Furthermore, they must refrain during the implementation period, usually this is two or three years, they have time to implement a directive. They must refrain from any compromising measures. Finally, they must interpret the national law in conformity with the directive so that there is no violence. If the member states implement the directive too late or in an inadequate way, not correct way, there may even be under certain conditions a direct application of the directive in favor of the citizen by the judge. That means if the members, the national parliament has not passed the necessary law to implement the uh, directive in time, or it has done it wrongly, the courts will implement that directive directly with their own rules, which usually are not the rules which the national parliament would have preferred. This has been a very effective precaution, which makes sure that this instrument of directives really works effectively in the European Union. Professor Schmidt, I think we lost your connection. Okay. All right. Uh, it seems that we have uh, lost connection with Professor Thomas Schmidt. Just trying to reconnect with him again.
Oh, okay. Uh, I think we get him back. Professor Thomas, are you with us? Hmm? Hello? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was yes. Zoom, which that, threw me out of the conference. Uh, that, that's right. Okay. Can I go on for two yep. minutes? Yep, yep, yep. You can I, do it. I'm very sorry, but... Yep. Uh, uh, that, that's, that, that's fine, that's fine. These are the technical problems we can sometimes <laughs> have. Yes, yep. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, just a moment. So, no. Just a moment. Okay, now, can you hear me again? Yep, yep, it's very okay. clear. Yep. I, I'm very sorry. That's so, right, yeah. uh, now there was, no, it does not, there is something which does not work. Ah, okay. So, the, I wanted to talk about that there was also a Europeanization in constitutional law, but we will not have the time now anymore. Also, there has been a Europeanization in many other fields of law. So that we can see, say that there has been a profound transformation of the law of the European Union member states on uh, uh, by the European Union law. What are now the lessons I would want to draw from for the globalization of law from the experiences with the Europeanization of law. First, there will be no globalization of law without commitment to the rule of law. What Dr. Pratena said, law is binding for everyone. This must be the main principle. Otherwise, there cannot be a globalization of law. It cannot happen in a world of populist and totalitarian regimes. Second, there will be no globalization of law without multilateralism. Because globalization of law is not the same as a cacophony of heterogeneous bilateral agreements, which often would be imposed on the weaker partner by hegemonial powers. That's what Donald Trump wants. That's an alternative to globalization of law. Third, there will be no globalization of law without demanding requirements for the effective domestic implementation and enforcement of the global rules and standards, because otherwise it would just be symbolic. That means in a real process of globalization of law, which may come, I expect not all, but many of the examples which I have demonstrated here from the Europeanization of law to happen again on the global level. Fourth, there will be no globalization of law without sophisticated conceptual precautions to, to ensure compliance with the global rules and standards. I think that a real globalization of law will also probably include binding global requirements for an effective fight against corruption. I don't think that under a real globalization of law, a weakening of the anti-corruption institutions, like we have seen this recently in Indonesia, would be allowed, would be possible anymore. Finally, there will be no globalization of law without global courts of justice, because it needs independent, impartial, unpoliticized and highly respected international judicial bodies for the authoritative interpretation, intrinsic further development and effective enforcement of the global law in all the states in transparent, formalized legal proceedings. Private arbitration panels, as we have them in international business law, expert treaty bodies like we have in human rights law or other soft solutions would not be sufficient for a real globalization of law. 
That means it may come. We will see in the next decades. I'm not sure if it will come, but I think on the long term, it may come. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your patience, also with the technical problems, I think. Prima hey, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Smith. Uh, I would like to underline uh, very important lessons that you mentioned on the globalization of law from the experiences of the Europeanization of law. That that is uh, no globalization of law without commitment to the rule of law, without <laughs> multilateralism, without demanding requirement for the effective domestic implementation and enforcement of the global rules and standards, and no globalization of law without sophisticated conceptual precaution to ensure compliance with the global rules and standards. And last, there is no globalization of law without global court of justice. All right. Uh, the next speaker will be uh, Dr. Rodia, the Dean of the Faculty of Law. And she, she will be presenting uh, the presentation using Bahasa Indonesia, but the slides of the presentation will be in English. All right, so time, uh, I'll give it time to you, Dr. Rodia. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Dani. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Distinguished speakers, presenter, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Title my paper is The Urgency of Omnibus Law Acceleration the arrangement of legal harmonization in Indonesia. Outline in introduction, understanding omnibus law, the parody of omnibus law, the urgency of omnibus law, opportunity for omnibus law, harmonization prepares for Omnibus Law and Conclusion. Bahwa Omnibus Law diperlukan untuk mempercepat penerbitan regulasi yang mendorong percepatan investasi. Ini adalah pernyataan Presiden Republik Indonesia terkait tentang perkembangan global dan perkembangan ekonomi Indonesia. Dimulai ketika Oktober 2019, yaitu rencana tentang Omnibus Law yang diumumkan secara resmi oleh Presiden. 